Now I know it looks like we're taking everything apart here, but I think that until we get the case built, we're uh, probably best off keeping uh, Tony's aircraft in its little special hangar here until it's needed again. Yeah. Did we ever figure out what, what I was going to tell people when they asked me why this plane looks a whole lot better than the other three? I think I had something that we were gonna, I was going to tell people, but I can't remember what it is now. Anyway, maybe I'll put the lid on this too, keep the dust off of it. Do you know what? I don't think I dusted this. I think I dusted everything else and I don't think we dusted this, did we? Well, maybe we did. Oh yeah, that's right. This, those little little white things you see on the wings, that's uh, seagull uh, bombs. <laughs> I was going to put that little piece of foam on that it came with and the and the tin lid, but my experience is that if you can see what's in your in your container, you're going to be more careful with it. So uh, now we can keep the dust off and we can see what it is. And now, as they used to say in Monty Python, for something completely different, this is one of my overhead lights. And uh, it, all of a sudden, for no reason at all, started blinking. And then, after about a minute, it didn't work at all. It's got a dimmer switch on the back here, and I'm hoping the problem is the dimmer switch and I can completely bypass it and go in with the 12 volts or whatever this thing is. Uh, I don't think it's the power supply because I tried a different power supply and it didn't work. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Well, maybe it is a power supply. It's sort of going nuts over there. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it has to have a bit of a drain on it to. Uh, let's see if I can kind of short it out with my fingers here. I'm not going to get electrocuted with 12 volts. Maybe that'll put enough of a drain on it to make it work. No. Well, I don't know. Maybe it is a power supply. This would be DC, wouldn't be AC, because the LEDs won't work off AC, they like DC. And from any experience I've had with them, they uh, got to have it the right way around or it's not going to work. Uh, oh, here we go. What does this say? 18 volts. Oh, DC, 10 to 18 volts. Um, Okay, so this would operate off of as low as 10. Anyway, I'm starting to ramble here. I'm going to just work on this and see if I can't get it going. Um, uh, we will talk about the case today, don't worry. Well, this is kind of embarrassing. Maybe it is the power supply. Because this is the power supply that it was on for the last 17 months. And... Uh, Okay, that's the one we tested on the on the meter there. Now this is the one that I just unplugged from one of the overhead lights just a minute ago. And it's working fine. So that's, uh, it, it might be embarrassing, but that's uh, a cheap fix. Because one of those power supplies, uh, I'd probably get one off Amazon for $20, $30 delivered to the door. And if it's, uh, if it'll handle up to 18 volts, uh, I might have an old laptop uh, power power supply that, that uh, as best I remember, they're about that much. So uh, I'll look around and see if I can find it. Just for the fun of it, let's see how many volts uh, this thing is. I may have this backwards, but it doesn't matter. Okay, it's uh, 17, just a little over, yeah, it's about 17 volts. Um, 
I know it says minus, that's because I had the the polarity reversed, but uh, All right, now it's 19. Why would that be? It should be the other. It should be exactly the same, only positive. Um, well, you know what? I don't care. Let's see if I can find that other power supply from my old laptop. Well, I got good news and I got bad news. I found the power supply from my old laptop. It's uh, 19 volts and it uh, has a, puts out uh, 2.6 amps at 19 volts. The reason that I thought it was 12 volts is because this is the adapter that's burned out for the, uh, for the lights. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it is 12 volts. Puts out 4 amps. In other words, they both put out about the same amount of power, but they do it different ways. So, yeah, this one could probably handle it, but then it might burn out the transistorized circuitry in this light, and I don't want to risk that. Because I can, I can order another one of these from uh, Amazon. It'll be the second one now in two years that I've had to replace for these overhead lights. I got them about, oh, I'm guessing six or seven years ago from uh, B&H Photo in New York City. I should uh, give B&H a call and tell them that they've been running day and night for seven years and one burned out and I think they should have to replace this. Yeah, right. <laughs> now I can't complain. I've got a lot of use out of these lights. They used to be downstairs in my workshop. Those of you who used to watch my pen turning and all the rest of it series is. Well, I, I use these lights down there, and I just moved them up here for the model ship. So I'll just get on uh, on uh, Amazon and uh, order another one of these. And uh, yeah, and it seems to me that when I had to, I had to switch because the plug that came with it it was 12 volts and everything. But it seems to me that this this one the barrel is the right size, but the prong the the plug that goes into it is. Uh, is a little bit bigger in the light and it won't fit the ones that come with the like like this one here for instance will not fit in that light you know what I'm giving you a whole lot of information that you don't want to know uh, let's see if we can figure out how we're gonna make a case I do have an idea and I'll show you what I've got in mind as Columbo used to say just one more thing and the one more thing is this I did find it on Amazon well it's not exactly the same but it's pretty close at least it's the right voltage and it's only 1999 delivered to my door but look at this free delivery Wednesday June the 17th that's tomorrow that's impossible I'll believe that when I see it unless it ships from you know here in Winnipeg well but I kinda doubt that nothing ships from Winnipeg Okay, now for the case, I've decided to go with plexiglass instead of real glass. Even though plexiglass does scratch easily, I think that uh, being as that I'm going to be taking, you know, removing it from the case so that I can, you know, make changes to the what what is in the case. Uh, I think that for me, probably plexiglass will be safer in case I drop it. Um, oh. You'll notice I have the what's left of the decals, Andy's photo etch bender, and a paintbrush sitting over here. Now that's just to remind me, I want to talk about something uh, before this uh, episode closes here. So anyway, we've got our we've got our piece of plexiglass, and this is almost exactly to, to the, the, the right shape and everything. Uh, it just has to be like 10 times bigger. Well, I don't know about 10 times, but... Uh, at uh, Home Depot, at least here in Winnipeg, you can buy plexiglass, I believe. I've actually seen it there. It comes in sheets about like a sheet of plywood, only it's plexiglass. And it's like ten times as expensive as a sheet of plywood. But anyway, here we go. I'm starting to ramble about what's not important here. So if you took this piece of plexiglass, and if I was to heat it along here, and so that it just became malleable. Then I could bend bend this down, and then do the same on this uh, on this end. Bend it down, 
okay, you'd end up with something like this. All right, so you could see in from the sides, and you could see in, uh, obviously, you know, you'd be able, to be able to see through it. This is cardboard, uh, you know, probably anyway, you know that. Um, yeah, be able to see in from the ends. You wouldn't be able to see in from, from the uh, top, like my original fish tank idea, but it could be used as the sides and front for the case. Uh, I'm imagining that uh, I haven't checked with the plexiglass people to whatever thickness they would recommend, but I'm thinking it probably would have to be quarter inch because this from here to here is going to be like four feet and from here to here probably five feet. It's got to accommodate these long 200 to 1 scale ships and uh, so it's, you know, I want it to be at least uh, a couple of inches longer than the hood is long. The hood is actually about an inch and a half longer than our Bismarck over there. So, uh, yeah, old brand. Yeah, we won't talk about that. Anyway, so so I've got my plexiglass bent. So what do we do for a top and the bottom? Well, it could it could just be a a a piece of shelving, and same for the bottom. Uh, a piece of shelving, you know, this pre-finished melamine type stuff that you can buy, and uh, for for the back, it could be a piece of plywood, and I would, uh, go, you know, good one side plywood, and then I could uh, paint it white, and uh, maybe I could even get white shelving. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't checked around a whole lot lately. I, I know what can be bought. I just don't know exactly what's available. Um, so so that's my thinking now. Now, it could be hung on the wall if, uh, you know, drill holes in the, in, the, in the back of the plywood so that it could be mounted against the wall, except that not everywhere would, could it be mounted. Whereas if it had a, a little base, you know, maybe something that would almost look like a little bookshelf, um, you know, just to hold it up. I, I don't want the top any more than six feet high. So that would put the bottom about two feet off the floor. And, and I, I can envision three large models in this thing. I think it would work. Now that's, that's my thinking right now. It, it may be that uh, a month from now, whatever I come up with isn't going to look anything like this. But right now, that's the plan. I'm going to try and get a hold of a Plexiglas company, maybe two or three, and maybe I'll send them a, uh, a link to this part of this video so that they know what it is I'm talking about and what, what I want it for and they might have ideas. Uh, yeah, well, that's the plan for now. Now, I'm just going to rearrange the camera here because I want to look at you. So I'm not going to tell you why these different things remind me of uh, certain things that I wanted to mention. Well, maybe my my see-through skeleton watch. When I look at a watch like this, I can understand how it works. When people look at a battleship like this, uh, one of the first things they're going to see is is the guns, and they're they're pretty impressive. But I can sort of envision all the stuff behind the hull here that's making all of this work. I don't think that there would be anything in a ship like this that was built back in the 30s and maybe early 40s that, that somebody could not have shown me that I could not understand how it worked. It's because it's mechanical. I can see how it works. So it's interesting to me because I'm sort of mechanically inclined, you might say. Um, I don't, I'm not gifted, but I can understand it. it. It's of interest to me. So that's why, that's what's important about this ship to me. The, it's a machine. I'm into the machine. Now this particular machine, the battleship Bismarck, it flew a flag that most of the time it was the swastika. Now, uh, I'm, I'm going to explain why I don't want to have the swastika on this ship. And I know I've kind of done, done that before, but apparently I have to do it again. And I think it's a good thing because there are going to be some viewers that will 
will be watching right now that weren't watching maybe <clears throat> a couple of hundred episodes ago when we were talking about it. And uh, yeah, I, I can understand how everything works and maybe maybe the the aircraft would be more interest to me than they would to anybody else or to a lot of other people because I actually got my pilot's license when I was younger. So, so that would be of special interest to me. Anyway, um, I think that's about all I want to say about the mechanical aspect of it. I think you kind of grasp that, uh, that I, I'm thinking when I view this, I sort of see what's inside it. Uh, no. Let's uh, talk about why I'm not going to put the flags on. And I'm going to do my best to get through this. When I was in grade 4, 5, and 6, uh, my folks moved down to Omaha. And when I was in Omaha, I had a, a best friend. His name was Alex. And Alex and I chummed around together pretty well all the time for those three years until we moved back here to Canada. And uh, yeah, he'd come over to my house, I'd go over to his house. And uh, one time when I was over at his house, in, in their kitchen they had, uh, it was sort of like a kitchen nook, but it was more like picture a, a booth in a restaurant, but just one. And you'd, you'd, you'd sort of slide into it. There was room for, I think, four, maybe six people and and I was sitting me and Alex were sitting on one side and Alex's parents were sitting on the other side I'm sorry this is hard to tell I'm sure glad that I can delete a lot of this out. Serial numbers. I just can't tell it. Anyway, to them, the sight of the swastika probably represented horror and terror, the loss, the loss of family and friends. Uh, I don't want that on my ship. Oh, this is a bad episode. <laughs> I didn't know it was going to be this hard. Let's talk about the paintbrush. Okay. That was embarrassing for everybody. Okay, I don't know if I'm going to show that or not. Maybe I should just reshoot the whole thing and try and do it. I don't think I could tell that story uh, without breaking down. Uh, anyway, about 30, 30, 35 years ago, when I was working in the express department of the bus depot, there was a fellow by the name of Eric. He was about 20 years older than I was. Erica, Eric had been a member of the Nazi youth in Germany and he was telling me that when he was about 10 or so uh, that it was an exciting time. Every, everything was exciting. He said that they had no idea what was going on and he, he wouldn't have lied to me. They, they, did, they just didn't know. I think there were millions of people that did not actually know until after everything was all settled and uh, the uh, Allies had gone in and liberated. Anyway, uh, uh, to, in, what I'm trying to say is that the sign of the swastika to Eric, when if he didn't think about the bad part of it, it would mean excitement and a, a time of uh, prosperity and everything is everything is looking good. So uh, to him it, it meant something entirely different. Uh, but unfortunately to many many people it, it means something really really bad. 
once again, I don't want it on my ship. It's about, it's about the machine. It's not about the flag. Now, uh, something that's a little bit related here, and I'll talk about it tomorrow. I think I need to take a break. Uh, is the, the music that I played when we did our reveal here, you know, when I took the camera and went around the di different aspects of the ship. I had music going on. That was not the original music that I had chosen. Uh, but we'll talk about that tomorrow. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and all being well, we'll see you tomorrow. Now there's an old saying, maybe it's not so old, and if I looked it up on the internet, I could probably find out exactly how it goes. I haven't heard it for a while, but it goes something like this. If we don't remember our mistakes of the past, we are bound to repeat them. And I know that there's those who are going to say it's a good idea to have the swastika on there because it just reminds us of what it was. And it, it makes us more aware of our mistakes. We human beings are so stupid. We forget so easily. And we do the same stupid things over and over again. So it seems, if you look at history. Anyway, I don't want it on my ship for the reason being that to, to not have it doesn't offend anybody, but to have it will offend some. So it's not going to be on my ship.